to see how they can yes. judge these to be eligible. Okay, members of the public session, if you want to bring uh, the witnesses through, that would be great. So that is us moving on to item seven uh, on the agenda. So I would refer members to the briefing paper from the committee clerk at page 29 and written submissions at pages 20 to 54 of the table papers. Um, so just while we get everybody through, um, we are delighted uh, to welcome uh, Kolya Nigel Skolyokta today, along with representatives from Queen's University. Um, I'll let everybody get settled before we start. All these chairs don't work on carpet. <laughs> you glad we took the with arms in these and then you stand up your fingers when you slid in. Oh, oh. So That's why the arms were taken off. Good afternoon. Uh, you're all very welcome today. So I'll do a quick introduction, but you can all introduce yourselves in a wee bit more detail when we get started. So uh, presenting today, um, we have Maria Thomason, um, CEO uh, from Sina G, uh, Orna Nagari, Senior Education Officer from Sina G, Ashling O'Boyle, uh, Director from the Centre for Language Education at QUB, uh, Dr. Mel Engman from the Centre for Language Education, QUB, and Dr. Yakid Ortega from the Centre for Language Education at QUB. So I hope I've got all the pronunciations correct there for everybody, uh, and you are really very welcome today. Um, so we're going to have the opportunity today, which is great for the committee to have its first chance to use the simultaneous uh, translation um, service. So my understanding is that for the presentation from Sina G, we'll be using that, and then for QUB and the Q&A, we will be um, m m conducting that in English. Is that correct? Or um, If the questions come in Irish, we're happy yes. to take them in Irish, and if they come in English, we'll respond okay, in English. Okay, so we, so, so we have the options to do that, so that's great. We have maximum flexibility here today. <laughs> which is great and it, it, we're, we're delighted as a committee to have the opportunity to use to use that facility today. So uh, presentation and um, we would say I know there's quite a number of you here today and um, but we want to make sure we have good time for, for questions so we, we would be suggesting up to 10 minutes uh, for the presentation. I know that could be tight for time but uh, we're, we're already running over substantially and I, I know you have a lot, a lot you'll want to cover. Um, so we, we'll, we'll um, move straight into presentation um, and I think I've just advised members they'll need to turn the volume up on their headsets because they're all down, uh, down, down at zero at the moment. Trinona my Dave Akarja, Tame and Ye, Torch Fujara, Gawilan Lagan Berla, Osmakor, Marshan, Jani May Erect, and Gaelic Career, Erin Spotta, Nila Sugum Kajay, Mara Harlishan, Ach Tasulagum Gamena Hashjuhori, Kenalta, do. Um, Trinona my Ismisha Maria Thomason, Ismisha Am Pri Waimanak, Er Horlinigil Skaliakta, August Tib Lamanuta, Orla Niari, Ofigak Shinshrak Ijahis, La Korlinigil Skaliakta, and Dr. Ashley Noboyle doc, and Dr. Mel Engman Agus and Dr. Yesid Ort Ortega on uh, Oal Skull Narena. But while on Buihis a go live um, and Jesh saw a, a horch doing Arnil Nagel Skaliakta Fle, Kumai Le Upper Nakorlia. But while on Fosta, Sakatal Shays Buihis a go, La Hashjuhori and Channel. Or is Kinsha Gobosha de Fleischer Oginia and Kurlahersha Ayanu in Nilik live Tronona? Sakate so, uh, Dolshe so Spoilam and Jesha a Hapu le Clactory uh, August Dalti Naharnula a Ihinch August a Wallu as an upper a leg a Yan and Shade August as an as an Chomantus a Larian Shade Ahan a Lala Bioshen Dunadalti Muntry Dunadalti no Dunatishmahori Aid Hain. To Arnion the Gael Scullyacta, Erin Seal, the Kegab, the Brescia's Kegab Lane and Us, and Nijeg Shakto Ahain, Kurt Bunny O'Gael Skull, Er Woher Shoy, and Mulfarsha, the Nina Delta, Augus Anish in Fiha Fiha Kahar, to Hart Er Shakt Vila Galai Delta, Egfrastal Er Dahida Kuig Neeskull, Dahida Kahar Neeskull Gumleshkull, Traha Kuig Bunskull, Augus Kuig Er Wunskull. Is our broad a Gawil and Gael Scullyacta, Er File, in Ahan Arnil. Derer and Taija, Etajanta, Eg Sainuliha, Augusig Oliha, Gahidar Nashanta, 
Tamol more Bontashi Igwench, Lishin Tomajahis, Bontashi Socialta, Cogniacta, August Commerce in a mask. Es Es Gomaleshka Es Kennel Ejahis da Hangahak, A and Tomajahis. Ta mo odi mo oliacht and tomajahis in usage in snusk in snigil skulna, ach a jagister gak hour trivan nigelega. Marshin, bo wailam of a sillier and shaw, go well in gaelic in usage in snuskulna sogginia, margleas hon curriculum a cur or file. In sinvlian yavila, cur an rinnejahis corlinigil skulliacta erbun, la taku law and dugus rachtel a cur of aim. Augustusian and Dugas Rachtel, Lishin Gael Scullyach to Esku, Augustus Bragu. As she in Asia Tai Corlin Gael Scullyach to Nalinra, the Scullina Funula, a her urban, own Rayo Scullyach, Gajanir one Scullyach, Dugach Dunya or White Law A, Augus in a Sol Rofer, Gael Scullina and a Sol Rofer are Ejahist to Ardkajan. Mar Agriacht, Tarul Lahan Oginia, Lishan Ish, Lahemer Chogginia, Lishan Ish and Awinchamach. Kurdamwij Korlia, August Tror or File Dun Fubbel, Dunrin, August of Forest Ella Ejahish, August Glackamwij Gak Jesh, and Gail Scullyacht occur a Grilar Gak Kora. Es Agriacht ain't a Vugmwij Afach, August Falaher, Tashe Hardaway Do Yanta Oginia, play Le Gak Grey Dun Upper. No taku, lagak drama and talu, or white law, gales, solar or gales, scoliacta, a cart or bun. Neil Shishaw, cart, na core, Augustus Kencha, na quil shake, chacked, lishin dogus racto. Le, le fas lanunach, chig duchling. Tan arnul, egg fainu, e goris, ean changach, nak diggin, moliacht, and tomajahish, August nak glacken, narectanish, sogginia, sonairu, augusied, and monibra. Tana Tana Five and a Kirna Oginya New, Esavi Ihinta, and Sin and Sanafrat near and Gil Scoliact, the Dulce Rinna Nijahis, here Sibli and Yavilis a hocked. Tashe Sillier, go will policy de Dungil Scoliact, Eginrin, Life Rock Bun, Latrore Cart, a her Latrore Cart, August, Arrigid M. Maliha, a her file, Lagolan Lech, Lishna Lishna Five and a Shan Muniha Shaw, August Latakia Key, a her file, and Arnul. Curhid policy marshaw, Gumaleshkal Spragat policy marshaw, Contasiat Fosta, Tivisteed and Rin, August Tivisteed and Uderus Ejahis Marhampla, August Eid, Ekur, Eg Playlish and Arnul. Chainrola to Ogunya in Sincorlia, Naduchlein a Kuras were Hor, Ak Fosta, Narechi Kumoi, Tanarechi Ogin, Neil Woon and Ish a constructor, and Til Politiakta. August in an estia key, Leedakur Greek. Tashaska Fuingade, Dunagil Skulna, Lonnieha, a Sivana, no a verdict new, a Tashaladach, no Nakwil Sassel, Dun Seo Skulla. Kega will Galore Oberjanta, Galore Oberjanta, Egenrin Harnam Lente, Tagalore Lejanu, Lishan Le Limwij a Horch, a Ad Le Lishan Kaijan and Arnil Verla. Ta Corlin Gil Scullyak to Dunturum, Gogahi and Renanishka, Prainach, Plan Forberha, Hurt of Aim, Da Cursi, Coria. Lishan Lishan Varnisha, Adunu, August Lakenshu, Gajeg Lagak Skull, and Curriculum Lahan, a Curafile de Galti. Ta Sogin, Fuina Duchlain at On, Marjula Le Sign Rake Danish Ejahis, um, Egal Shear, Gaji Nijeg Nohusani. Arisha Sarishella, Fagter and Arnul, Erlar, Ona Planani, August Tashola Fekel, and Sankurhega is Jenny Ata and Ach, Lishan Sen Transformation Project. Neil Shisha and Glaka, Kahimaj Kuranid and Shaw, Mar Tashid and Turamatogi Nagawal and Chorus Ekchep Ernadalti Shaw, La and Yele. Tasol Hermuntri, Er and Ernvak Ismo Ata Riv and Arnul Salata and Yuan. Is Tamaj Tagir Kem a Nishon? August is Kencha Kermil. Oh, Maleshka. 
Ta gair kem anishon agus kaihi an rin rechi a curanach go prainyach le kinchu go wilga lor munchi munchi le curriculum omlin a halaher an ahan gilsko. Cur coilne na gilsko leach de paper le kiela ar an kesho agus rin maj leshin rin e a mi vananor shukaicha. Ta multi agus rechi kaja ku gan costas lag ha amak a silier in some faper kierna. Anish an tam le grievu orhu. Ta cooked in faper sha agav in snapakishi olish. Dahin and Turishka fair start, sign Keshna, a win in Lakinil Muntri, Agus Aspa Jeshna de Olam Garamil Muntri, San Arnil. Larry and Turish, Kujaka Lishna Jackrup de Shaw, Chanahur Emmerch, er heart grow hactile, Lananak, de Fashti, Agus Dagini Oga Naharnil, Naharnila. Esmerialer and Winu are like a firmage, Trija fair start, Goromajanan and Taija a commissioner, Erna or Shaw. Is she Ashlyn, Agus an Erin Siki, a hug for in Tajishin, Agus Karim Falcha or Life Rumpionish, Lord Live, or if you're a couple of Omancha, or no more hack directory, and I can mock as in Tajishin. For a meal of my Gavasa Vako for Jack. Kahime, the men on Post Island Eshmar Ashri or Koenyak, such on all. Ashlyn. Um, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to join in this presentation of evidence. Um, my name is Dr. Ashley McBoyle. I'm gathered here together with our team from the Centre for Educational Research at Queen's University Belfast. A little bit of background about who we are. Between us, we have a number of decades of language education research in different countries and continents around the globe. And we bring that together here um, as part of what we did in, in this report. So just to take you through uh, some of the, the key points of, of what we did. First of all, in order to address a better understanding of the challenges faced by Irish immersion practitioners in the north of Ireland and Northern Ireland, we undertook an international systematic review of literature, and that provided us with a baseline of what are the types of additional challenges that are faced by other immersion educators across the world. Uh, and so those countries include, we have a long list of countries and you can see what they are. So that's part of what we undertook a systematic uh, style literature review uh, and did that because to avoid any uh, cherry picking or avoid any bias that uh, might come along. And what we produced as a result of that was a list of competencies, a list of additional challenges faced by Irish immersion educators, and we also produced a list of potential responses to those challenges and to those additional uh, workload capacities. What we also did as part of the, the, the research was to conduct interviews with a range of stakeholders, so a range of practitioners engaged in the Irish medium uh, education sector. So those included teachers, so Irish immersion teachers, it included principals, leaders of schools. We also wanted to get teacher educators perspectives to see what they thought about current life being an Irish medium practitioner in Northern Ireland. And we also engaged with student teachers. So the new teachers coming through um, wanting to know what they thought about the Irish medium education sector in Northern Ireland. Um, that is the approach that we took to in order to gather data. On the basis of that data, we then worked with uh, Irish medium practitioners and produced an eight-point action plan. Um, so based on the systematic review of international evidence, based on the multi-perspectival interviews with stakeholders, and uh, then created an action plan as a result. And so that eight-point action plan stands. If I have a moment, uh, I might just uh, give a little bit more detail about some of the findings from talking to the practitioners in Northern Ireland. Um, I suppose it goes, if I may, um, it was quite a surprise to us coming from international contexts about the types of burdens that we hear placed on Irish immersion educators in Northern Ireland. Uh, certainly there they told us plenty of times about the impact of the lack of resources. So it's not just about the lack of resources, it's the impact that the lack of those resources have on teachers, have on pupils and have on the school itself. One of the other significant issues that they brought to our attention was uh, their concerns around assessment practices. Um, they were uncertain about assessment practices, uncertain about uh, uh, some of the, the, the impact that those assessment practices were having on young people in their schools. One of the other issues that were highlight, was, was highlighted from our interviews was around a, a 
being able to produce a language-rich environment, being able to scaffold a language-rich environment for the young people who are in Irish schools. So that means having teachers who are able to use Irish language in all sorts of different ways. It means classrooms being big enough for the numbers of increasing students. It means subject-specific materials. So there is a maths book in Irish, so there is a chemistry book in Irish. So those are the types of things around scaffolding a language-rich environment that was, uh, came across to us as very important. And finally, one of the significant areas, and I think this is crucial to explore for the future is around the professional development of the teachers that we currently have and the leaders that are within the Irish medium education. There, we have been told a number of times within the interviews about how excellent practice exists, but we've also been told about how teachers are burnt out. Irish immersion teachers have been carrying quite a heavy load for a number of decades, and, uh, and I think that's something that comes across very clear within our research. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I think there was some, an impressive sort of two, two levels of simultaneous translation going on there, Maria. So that, that was very, very impressive. Um, so, but again, great, really, really want to just add my thanks to the, to the service here and then the Assembly as well for providing that service for us today. We were really, really delighted. Uh, we didn't get in to be the first committee to use it, but uh, <coughs> we're, we're very happy to, happy to, be, the, to be the second. Um, look, there's, a, there's, a, there's an awful lot that we could cover here, um, and I think particularly arising out of the, the, the research from QUB, there really is so much uh, to cover. So I, I think if there, there are probably members will have, will have uh, uh, questions covering a range of issues, I, I just wanted to deal with, with one in particular particular and given that we have officials coming in shortly after this around uh, capital and infrastructure w would you be able to give us an insight into sort of where, where the gaps in terms of the the, the provision in, in Irish medium education are currently and um, so where, where you might see the need for capital investment and I'm thinking particularly of actually developing new schools and I'm thinking more particularly in terms of post-primary message that I hear coming through quite strongly is that a, a lot of parents their children go through primary setting in, in Irish medium and then when it comes to making that post-primary transition there really is no viable local option without having to, to be asked to travel very long distances and, and the two post-primary options are not far off oversubscribed or, or, or at capacity. So I just wanted to get an idea of where you would see in terms of capital development um, so that we can plan for, for, for provision where that's at. Yeah, thanks very much, Nick, for your question. And it's, it's a pivotal question for the sector. I suppose our business is all about growing the sector, encouraging and facilitating the development of Irish medium education. What I would say is that from my experience, I can see that there is at some level facilitation ongoing but I don't see an awful lot of encouragement if you take if you pick apart the statutory duty so um, you're absolutely right um, our role is to ensure that Irish medium provision from early years right through to post primary is available for all those who wish to avail of it and that is certainly not the case uh, there's a very long I suppose explanation as to why that is um, I think if we go back to the fundamental part here, there's an overarching lack of a policy and lack of a strategy in terms that I've already mentioned at, at, at departmental level in terms of, I think we, uh, we're a victim of our own success in many ways. The Irish medium sector has grown and grown exponentially year on year and I just think the system has failed to catch up. In terms of uh, accommodation, it's a big one for us. As I said, 60% of our schools are in inadequate temporary not fit for purpose accommodation um, whilst much has been done over the years um, you know we do have lovely Irish medium schools around we only have one currently outside of Belfast um, Gail Skull and Gran and Oma with a second one due to open in Stravan um, at the end of the month or straight after Easter but we have an example for in Derry City for example we have three schools all of whom are growing one is sustainable and has been sustainable for a very long time the other two are growing towards sustainability and will reach that in the, in the next few years. The reason why they haven't been able to reach sustainability and so <coughs> access capital um, funding is because the, the current facilities, they're, they're housed in, in um, t accommodation that is not, it doesn't allow them to grow to reach sustainability a lot of our schools. So they're in a catch-22 situation. Um, there's no 
but I, I do not believe there's anybody over oversight. There's no oversight role in terms of where are we go with Irish medium. So we'll, it's it's the the age old story of we'll deal with it as it come along as it comes along. We're seeing that as a as a problem. You were all acutely aware of the SEM piece. So I think it's a lack of stra- a strategy, a lack of planning. Um, there is, we have been talking to the department about the development of, um, as I said. Um, trying to think of the English term for it, an improvement programme for Irish medium schools because the accommodation is absolutely dire. I'm sure that many of you may have seen the latest piece on the news just last night, Bob Skull, Colm Kelly and Derry, um, Catholic, the, the one and only full standalone Catholic maintained Irish medium school is sitting in mobiles that have been there for 40 years. Not to give my age away, but that's my entire lifetime. You know, that is inappropriate and somebody somewhere could have and should have stepped in and said this school is growing numbers are here parents want this how do we think where we are now what are the needs right now but where are we going where are we going what is the vision for Irish medium education what is the strategy um, we have communities sitting in the wings wanting post primary provision um, unfortunately we're tied to an area, pl- area planning process that is not conducive or sympathetic to a growing a young growing sector we are in a situation where, on the whole, the school estate, the numbers are dwindling and, and the, the whole rationale behind area planning was to rationalise the school estate. Where is the growing sector in there? So I think there needs to be an acknowledgement that we need something different. One size fits all doesn't work for us. Um, and I think that to not do so is contrary to the statutory duty. Um, so yes, you're absolutely right. Post-primary is a huge issue for us. But we've also so many schools who are sitting in accommodation that I'm not sure that if you were driving past, you'd want your children to go there. But of course, Irish medium education is not just about the bricks and mortar. If it were, I'm not sure we would st- we'd be sitting in front of you today because it's so special. It's beyond that. And parents trust what's happening inside is, is special and they, and they entrust their children to us. But we need to be giving them the best that we can give them. They deserve that. Um, we don't have any money within the sector to um, engage. We have to limit and temper the um, could you focus on the expectations. expectations. Thank you, Orla, of um, of new co- new communities coming forward. We have almost ten communities sitting in the wings wanting to establish new preschool provision. We can't meet that demand. There's no money to do so, and we, as a small team, we don't we aren't we are not resourced to do that. So we have to choose. Certain communities will we'll go with you this year, we'll come with you back to, to you next year. And we have a small window of opportunity. In many cases, when, when, when families don't see a drive forward, a move forward, a progression, they pull out. We've missed, we've missed the boat. They've gone to an English medium school. And in many cases, we've lost that entire family. So we've lost all those siblings as well. So those are, other, those are whole families of children that have missed out on the opportunity to avail. So I think we, the department have said they want to work with us on this. They acknowledge that there is work ongoing. I have to be fair and say there is work ongoing, but it's a little, it, we need it now and we need it yesterday and we needed it 10, 20 years ago. So I'm hoping we have an executive now and we'll be in a better position, but the capital budget is not there. I don't know. I, I have to be hopeful, but obviously I have to temper my own expectations as well on that. Thank you for that. Like, there's, there's much more I could ask, but we have the right officials coming in after who yeah. we can we can yeah. raise some of these issues with. So I, I'll not take any any more time on, on, on this and make sure other members can get in. Deputy Chair, you want to come? Nick, because the Mila Boyka Slavas Chak was Jack, I was the Falcher Rove a leg. The and Nervi and Rooney Boone, a steel and run shot in Johan, Dorche Grosje play, the Colin Gil Scoliak Major, the Rechi, a current age. The Colin Lack, the Solaher Munchery. She encased the Tahogums, and the KJ, the Narechi, the Tahom. Or my goodness, and the fact, I guess more German than Narechi again. I guess she Orla, a Tahog play, Lishan, and Gabriva, so like he made the Orla and Kesh and the Raggards. Or my goodness, Pat. Is to host the kid, does she care go on with any Garker show? He fast by Munchery to um, Kahima Jai Hinch Foster, Gurrod Shaw winning on Lagak level on Rail Scullyak, Gigi and Ear One Scullyak, August Buen and Chai Lagak, Walfornia, Instant Scullyak, and Neil Golordini again, Fod Fad Nahatcha, um, Ak Ohi, fast by Munchery to Nemo Arker, Retchi, Ohi, Nabun Scullyak to August Ohi, Nahir One Scullyak to 
Egg level in the bun scoliacta is five cunula at a inchy. Um, so our fapper tagalor muntiri oginia. Um, keg agahi much sulu cunula or shen ahem blain de rare mara lanan le fwas na harnula. Akin jack rock de ta ogin anish na nakwil na muntiri shen agolostach a wastiacht in san arnul. De rare finish a star ogi nail ak de hit fungied or in van a glacu la rolana in arnul na gale scoliacta. Um, a level na bun scoliacta. Tasha de Gul Harlar, Tasha de Gul Gaharnil and Verla, Tasha de Gul Oyas, Achawil and Turistil, August Nakonulaha, a Wadney Svar. Um, so Marshinda, Ohi Vretchi de Kahi Mujaveg Ark or Retchi Lishna Mudrishan Akonul, um, Egg Chagisk in Snashomri Rangus Oginia. Um, Nailor, Tali, Oskala, a ek, Defa Tatishan Folam Hogin, O, um, Ona Dilinchi Ella in a Will and Tomages, August in a Will just Curse Ages. Um, or shul, ni more doing better by garker who hungry castle le um lesson card decap to cudge nerinya done a shagoli hit edges ruddy again marshen a curse to shul in a neck for natali um or in tishkin shgo one he two a wastiak ins and rolton or few wrench plenty any a um ni higlin lana one chere le muntry gale scoliac de a frenal nor not greek ni in shitsu since ni gale scolin a mar is karamu in estiac de shin on hein um, egg level in the here one scully after Tashi Nis Fossogus Nis Silura, um, Ins and Vegas go well, Ger Ga and Ish Le um, Cursa, Bied, no Cursa Tico, no and Darod, a Curbun, um, the Wootry Gale Scully Octa, Gaheri Hin the Moontry Sign Hours in, um, Tashin Lejani Mor Hour Prine, Martan, Ear One Scully Octa, Fas, Egg and Rata, Is Arja, August Neil Mojinia, Conyo Suus, Lesh and Rata Shin, um, Lesh and Elu Shin, O Heavlin the Moontry Da. It was a most of a play that she run for in a five in a show. Tom was a play long August to Tom Popper Kierna August to Ogovsha to shin um run with Shinner and Renna Melunasa so she lim Garnish and Tom gone a vague play less than Rod, Akave Grey we were in Rod, um Marble Corgoroshan like Tarly Rinch Plenty with him Foster. And then what? Just be Meshak on Hakdish Tahan Shinnasara Gowell Ni Higlinia so Kudge White and um. Tamajanya Kirkeshner and Rin Kawamich Lasha, Kawamich Lashin, Tanjob Janta Oginya, Tana Rechi Kurha Osakor, Tag Ta Iri Dihanish er Rinanijahis, Sukus Insan Rin Gallagher, Lishna Radisha Kurvine, Tamajanya Kenalda Inye and Pisa Sukinya Yanu, Masvajer, Ni Higlan a Hilu Yanu, Glakishe, Ta Iri Dihanish Lishna Radisha Kurvine. Lord, for my good Ashin, August, just case the wine ala. Uh, Tugan and Plan Grivia, the first year uh, supported the Fiscal Gal Estralish uh, Ran Farchiak, the Bartish, mm-hmm. on a Kenchu Ginyant there on a Diakt, or Gu on a Gil Scoliak, the Brochias Kencherakta. Nakwil She Shaw or Suel Hanafian, August Morawil, Kitagan Nakwil. Rishala Pata and Kesha into Tauk Tucker Father Gus Gom Buihislat as Shaw her. Tame Rashak and Kesha for policy, Gam policy of Egg and Rin, uh, Modulish and Gil Scullyak, Neil and Arniel Labihe, and more Arniel and Ajahish, Marshinda, Tashe de Nos, Egg, Luck Janta Kenyi, Lucked uh, Screef Policy, Ruddy Akuranach, Gan and Amini, Lorchlin, Gan and Amini, Gulagorlin, So Erin Tiwella, Chig Ruddy Amach, Nakwil Sasil, Nakwil Forstenach, the Arniel Nagil Scullyakta, Neil Shea, the Nos, Marhampla, Gahuya Break, Kajoki, Kuru Frege, Hoginia, Lavea Lahar, Gakora, Lavea Lahar, Gak, a Gak Grupa, Esminic, Priwiji, Naharnula, a Chak de Jagwellian, Margo Will Ruddigan and Ye, Hak Frege Reifus, Stratish Ur, no Kurhega Ur, no Clar Ur, <coughs> Nakwell Forstenak, the Narnial, August Kernshid Kesh ni Orinia, Ka Roshev, Na Roshev a Lahar, Na Kershid, Na Mainti Sugginia, Na Rektanish Sugginia a Lahar, August Jeremajinia Goromajan, Kudjdanam, Amniella, Ni Rubara Lugin Fui, Gajikar Hanik Shea Hoku. So, Shilingo will Kesh den Shen, Marker, Gar Fagter Er Larmwich, Go Foil, A Rinch Korachi Stratashaha, August In Amni, Tarly and Shea Goromaj the Shomra, A Rehan Valley Fridge, August Assembly of Indishin. Sajeru, in ye mar dirch me hanafian, neil ak furren ain't a bugging, Johnny Majar Nihil, Johnny Majar Nihil of a lahar, ahanach, 
Akner currently an SDAC to stock Marshan and SDAC Dama, Biosan, Oginia, Marofagi, no egg prewigi, no clactory in the Harnula, Glacu, Ah, Mass and Skull, Nurnakwal Bedger Onad, Nurnakwal Onadir File, Lagolastach, Inyet Hamel Fada, Chicken Rodarash, because Neil Mudge Lucha on, Neil Neil Mudge Lucha on, Marshan the Biamudge Brach, Hodge War, or Offagi, Ainer, Jahil, Larry, Donarnil, Biamudge Brach, or Ergi ni similar is the Gaelic Act, no of a boiled in Gaelic Act. In that and process of in that, global policy on global curhig a curh in that. August Gershon the came in a high history yanni matatu a gal a big play. Listen more on your lineages. Neil Shenlick Tarley. August Nora Kega will kind of my talk a ogin listen Rooney Boone listen the last Rooney Boone la Hoffagi August La Boilella Egan Ren August in Sanuio August Achniella. Nora Emmy and Shed Emmy and Tishkins. Emian and Jahil, Emian and Dolhon Kin. Ogus Mar Jeremsa and Neil and Rudd Labby is Jack La Policy. Le Ligajiglin Agoni of a Kincha go may mass took it and Dilgus Rachtel. Ogus go may troar Ignahofakishan from Doylish and a Kurdabay. So five term wedge in Achnagaria to go minic, Rudd and Abel Key, is minic, Kahimera, Ogus a Jamor, I'm sure, Rabbit, Nico Minicirna and Ish, but Tarly and Jago Foyle go well, Majenia Oscor, Dini Shinsharaha, August Gan Fesabayaku go well on, Donarna, Tamajer Nood, Lakega Blaininus, Neil Shin and Glaka, Marshin Ta Ta Ahrimion Di, Ta Ahrimion Di Galadger, August Shinra, Ta Dulgish or in a leg of a egg playlishin, Shop Hwashti, August Ta Ta Ijahis, Ta Ijahis, Ta Curriculum Kirna, Egolari, Ta Changa Differel Shin a leg. August Tashi to Gulgish or in your leg, Sheila Move Kincha, go well, with a leg more of Kuji or son, Gakpashta, Tata Ahasorum Gurch and, and Tyrish and Ernamalov, um, more Sheila Gajig and Gugahish and Chakdo Moir, so in Jah Hamplish and Hakdo Moir. Tasagum go well, um, Guru Up Lukna Reina, a gark of Priva, er Cursi Policy Foster, Marshan Nilsagum Yasider while at Hakta Stach, Erin Keshoff and Fallacy. Yeah, um, I think uh, one of the key things that we wanted to talk about the uh, action plan is that we did, in fact, uh, consult the community. We worked together uh, with the stakeholders to, did so, to do some different types of proposals in, con in terms of action plan. And one of the things that we proposed was this uh, idea of policy engagement strategy. And as a first step, I believe we, have, we are taking this first step right now because we wanted you, those of you who are sitting down today, to get an awareness of, of what is happening um, at the schools, what is happening with the with the parents, with the families, and with the communities, and, uh, at, and to create this awareness first, help us, uh, all of us, to understand this need that we have been talking about, so some kind of top-down policy can be created at a policy, sorry, at a government level to secure some funding for our communities to continue working and hard with the teachers and the parents to continue carrying out the, the, the projects that, that they're already doing on the ground, but also uh, to secure funding so more research can be done in collaboration, in conjunction with the teachers and the parents and synergy as well, so we can actually put together a plan for policy at a school level uh, in, in collaboration with the teachers and the students uh, uh, at a community level, at a school level, at a classroom level, at different levels. Policy at different levels, like a policy that comes from here, top down, then middle, and then lower policy at a school level to secure uh, the work that has been done for so many years to, to address some of the needs that, that we have discussed today. More? Okay. Yeah. I push the boat out. 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 I push the boat um, is doha ohi vakwanida is five fad one here ishin um in some cash or to misha gulaveg lord trash and a tagish um ashna curriculum name or dean arker lynchiella 
in a will and Tom Major history for a while, so Alba Nogus and Rat and Rug more hampa in Snahatch and Ashin Ta Agriocti or Lake or Her Bonaku Le Bushed Cart Le Vague Rear or Ashna Dana Min Changha um August Glocken Chai Arigat Imali Hamarshin Mar Neil Brabus Le Janu as Ashna Giliga a curl curve while Neil and Dainra co co more shin Laharnil and Verla so Glocken Chai Stratish August Policy Marshin um Le Vague Rear or Narek the Nisho He Vashina de and Shaw Tantashi and Augustia Ogin, August Curran should ash in the ink to her file, Ak Neil and Bush a Kiyaku, Leveg Rear or Ur and Obershin, um, Ismar Yalershin, Go Will Moontree Gail Scullyakta, Go Foil and a Sea, Gajia Jaha Clogs and Eha, a Crohu Gajash and a Hain, um, August, you know, Ni Higlin, Gull or Lena, August Chakter Ruddy, um, a Tower Lau, a Garniel and Verla. So I know, um, I know that was a big thing that came through in the Queen's research in terms of the resource gap. So I don't know if anybody wants to come in on any of those elements. Yes, um, just in relation to resources, within our report we identified three different types of resources, so human resources, classroom material resources and then physical environmental resources. In terms of human resources, um, the Irish medium teachers are the biggest asset that there is and that is what we one would suggest that that's where most investment needs to occur if we are looking at a sustainable future in terms of Irish medium education. Um, that is, as, as Orla has said, there are very many ways of, of that, how that occurs um, in different places around the world. One of the other matters in relation to human resources, as they are, is that we are talking about Irish language teachers, Irish language assistants. We're talking about uh, more than just the teacher or more than just the uh, principal. We're also talking about the development of subject specialists as well. So being able to make sure that children can access the full curriculum through uh, the medium of Irish. Um, and also, just to sort of mention as well, uh, the t learning and teaching materials, the teachers in our uh, report uh, who we interviewed were very clear that they can point to examples of excellent materials but they also have considered that the breadth and the depth of those are not enough and the availability of them is not enough um, and so that was deeply problematic for them. Just to come back, I know you mentioned about capital bills but just to come back again under physical and environmental resources teachers want spaces that are supportive of learning environments teachers want spaces that they can do the kinds of activities in them that will address the needs of children with diverse learning backgrounds, with diverse language backgrounds and for some of the teachers that we interviewed that wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. They were ha having to operate and provide learning environments in, 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 as one teacher educator described it as, uh, not ideal for a child learning. So that is the kind of environment that the teachers are, are, have been told us that they are trying to work in. So the human resources, the classroom materials resources and the environmental and the physical resources are, are really key. Deputy Chair, I have indulged the Deputy Chair. No, I know. I'm going to move. I have, have, have to keep in his good books, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to um, go around. Anyone else who's indicated now, and I will ask for it to be, to be one question at this stage, just to make sure we, we, we don't run out of time. So, Carla, you were next. Thank you, Edgar Maggot. Thank you so much uh, for being here this morning. And I just have one question, so it all works well. Um, first of all, <coughs> thank you all for, for being here and hearing that in the Irish language. Um, that was our first briefing, as you say, Chair, in here. It was just lovely uh, to hear. And uh, last week I went to a gig called Shadura in Dungiven and had met with the principal there, Jermud. And we had talked at length about they have a new capital, um, a new building, um, and just talking about the new opportunities that that will afford them with uh, different music rooms and young people being able to make podcasts in Irish yeah. and seeing the energy and um, just the hunger to learn as well. And you talked about immersion, so this was a real uh, language-rich environment, um, and it really it really made me think about you know the difficulties with the capital funding and how that can limit uh, Irish-speaking uh, students. Um, so I have to say, moi to the to the uh, staff at that school because they've taken it from I think it was 45 pupils initially right up to something around 400 now which is great. Um, I have one question which I have raised uh, previously at committee and raised with the department which is around the marking um, of students papers uh, and I know the the fair shared support supported research highlights the disparity and um, the strange systemic approach towards um, Irish medium pupils um, can you give any further details on what this means for pupils? Um, as I've mentioned before, I know it can often put them at a disadvantage. Thank you. Absolutely. Gormaigat, he and Cara. Um, 
It is a huge issue and obviously it has the potential to have massive impact on students. I'm going to ask Orla to come in on this very briefly and then I know QUB have a lot on that for their, from their research. So, Yeah, uh, Cara, I know that that has been raised previously at committee and I think it was raised at our last briefing in 2020, 2021 mm -hmm. and unfortunately very little progress has been made since then. Mm -hmm. Um, just generally, in terms of the lack of um, assessment and diagnostic tools, that's something that has been cited as far back as 1999. And again, you know, the need for bespoke assessment tools that can accurately assess a pupil learning through the medium of Irish. There's a quote that um, a, a bilingual person is not the sum of two monolinguals. They have a very specific language profile, and that's not something that is taken into consideration in our current assessment practices. And that's across the board from standardised assessments, you know, through to formal assessments, GCSEs, A levels. Um, I do appreciate that work has been ongoing with SIA in terms of computer adaptive tests and numeracy and literacy, but my understanding is that that has been stalled due to budgetary constraints um, and it does now need to be progressed as a matter of urgency. In relation to the GCSE and A-level examinations that you're referencing, um, the, the flawed practice of translating the pupil's exam script continues. This issue, this creates issues every single year in terms of errors in translation and then the misawarding of grades. So it's a very high stakes area um, and we can't afford to continue in this vein. We need to look at solutions. Um, I know that, uh, as mentioned, this is something that's come through very strongly in the research and we're, we're delving into this with um, Dr. Sultan Turkin. So, um, Ashley, I think maybe Sultan. Yes, has. yes. Um, so, just uh, unfortunately, Dr. Sultan Turkan couldn't be here today, but we know from the report that there is a great deal of uncertainty um, for Irish medium practitioners in putting um, uh, uh, reliability and validity into the assessments that they have to use. Um, it is certainly something that they feel that the underdevelopment of the uh, needs addressed. Um, and just on relation to the translation uh, matters, um, Dr. Sultan wanted us to note that uh, that when we talk about assessments being translated for Irish medium pu pupils, there is a point that one would see from um, uh, international evidence that the entire translation process itself, from the moment of translation, forming the translation team, to the stage of test score interpretation, needs to be further investigated. Um, she's given quite a detailed answer here about giving you an example of what that looks like. So, for example, um, when two versions of a test are made, they do need further investigation through particular theoretical analysis, through different practical analysis to include but not, lif dif not limited to differential item functioning. So making sure that the same thing, the same t the test item uh, is, is trying to get at exactly the same thing. And, and that is that kind of investigation uh, helps to reveal certain test items which perhaps might favour one group of pupils over the other group. Uh, and therefore, if this does happen, this threatens the validity of the whole test that's yeah. administered to the entire student population. So, in other words, um, if items are found to be favouring some test takers over others, and then the interpretations derived from these test scores would disadvantage a particular group of test takers. And this clearly has significant consequences for the youngsters who are taking those tests and end up with those results. Absolutely. There's definitely an equality issue here, for sure. Um, and that's something we can continue to raise um, at this committee. Thank you all very much, Karen Maggot. Uh, Danny, you were next. How are you, Chair? Pat, Pat took up most of the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> took up all of our time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to thank you for the presentation and, and the work you do promoting our language because I get to see it firsthand. All my children, two of the boys are still in Bunskull football first year and my daughter is now in the St Andrews. But I remember that the season, both myself and my wife have no Gaelic at, at all. And that decision to, to put our child through Irish medium education was not an easy one, but it was turned out to be the best decision we ever made because the pastoral care, the community ethos, the support comes with it, and like even the sports that came came with it. You now it's handballs played in my house, hurling, camogie, Gaelic, everything. So everything comes with it: tin whistles and guitars, and it, it's just amazing. And and I thank everyone for the work that they do to progress my children's education and I suppose that's my question is going to be around teachers and it's in relation to the sufficient supply of teachers and what impact 
that has the support and pupils with special educational needs and just the additional barriers that the schools are facing because it's, it's something for this committee that we really want to put in um, a, a strong um, ethos on is, is around special educational needs and, and, and what challenges are being faced in uh, Irish medium schools. Mike Tani, and thank you for sharing your uh, personal journey and of success. I'm sure uh, those principal uh, Seamus will love to hear all those great words. Um, yes, Orla is also our lead on SEM, but you're absolutely right. It is it's such a buzz issue across the board at the moment. So you can imagine it's no different. And in fact, there are many, many additional challenges within our sector. Um, yeah, so as Maria says, we all we, we all understand what the pressures are, fa are facing all of our teachers in terms of meeting all of the needs that are presenting in classrooms. In terms of how that more greatly impacts an Irish medium teacher, the external support is not at the same level as what it is um, for an English medium teacher. So we don't have the assessment tools, we don't have the diagnostic tools, we don't have the resources, we talked on those. We also don't have the... Um, health professionals, the, you know, like educational psychologists, speech and language therapists, all those multi, you know, those other personnel who help to support. We don't have the personnel with the expertise through the medium of Irish or even with the language competence to come in and support. So everything's available in English only. Um, it's through pure chance and, and luck that we find someone who maybe has the Irish language skills or the, the um, Irish medium experience to come in and support an Irish medium pupil appropriately. Just to give you an example of what that looks like on the ground, if you take a primary one pupil, for example, who is presenting with literacy difficulties, that pupil is learning only through the medium of Irish at that stage of their educational journey. So at that point, English isn't introduced within the classroom because of the immersion approach. So they're learning phonics, they're learning reading, they're learning everything through Irish. Um, all of the external support is through the medium of English. So the approach to date is that that child will have to wait until they start learning formal English, English as a subject, to get that intervention. Um, so we're talking about early intervention. That's maybe three, four years down the line. And then the onus is placed on the, the teacher. And our teachers are going above and beyond anyway, but they don't have the access to the external support to come in then and the peripatetic support to come in and support the pupil appropriately. Um, so I think that's that's where the additional pressure comes from. Maria mentioned the SEND transformation programme, and that's one of our big concerns at the minute because we haven't been engaging with that programme for over three years now. And what's coming out in the other end of September, there is absolutely no provision for Irish medium currently within that within the plans. We have raised those concerns with the Education Authority and you know, our initial ask is start to recruit on an Irish medium, English medium basis. We make up 3% of the educational population here. So start to recruit in that regard. You know, we need educational support personnel who have Irish medium ex expertise. One of, I suppose, one of the excuses that we get back is, is budgetary constraints, but it's actually a cost neutral solution. You know, if you're if you're recruiting twenty people, make two appointments that uh, that have Irish medium expertise. Um there's also a, you know pushback in terms of fair employment laws, but I think if the pupil is learning through the medium of Irish then it's very clear that the support staff should also have Irish. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are very clear frustrations in that regard and then again this is all impacting on the teacher and the teacher workload because they have to pick up the slack and they don't have the external support. So, And I would just like to come in on that and say that um, I suppose it's a question about equality and equity and I, I saw a quote lately that I really liked. It said equality is about giving every child a shoe and equity, equity is about giving every child a shoe that fits. So, you know, this is what we get. Our services are available to all schools. All schools have access to this, but that's not appropriate. It's not appropriate. It's not, it doesn't work. So there's an acknowledgement in the first hand that we need it, I think, is, is a big thing. We need to have that acknowledgement, and that's currently not there. I don't know whether it's because of the budgetary constraints or a lack of understanding, but it is greatly concerning because these children are completely and utterly vulnerable to a system that is not designed or even at, in, in many instances we feel willing to hear them and, and try to help. Thank you. Carmike. Carmike. Thank you. So 
two two final indications. I've got Kate next, and I am going to be really strict here. One question and answers will need to be re- really, really succinct. And then okay, my my next. question comes in five parts. No, <laughs> um, could do though. This has been. I know Chad doesn't want to preamble, but this has been so educational for me as someone who is new to the education committee and has limited knowledge of the Irish medium sector. Thank you so much. And I've written down everything and would actually like to follow up with you um, at a later stage. Um, following on from the um, the, Sen, the Sen piece, what learning is there from other jurisdictions um, and immersive education that we could take, I guess, that we need to look at in terms of what we replicate here um, and maybe with an emphasis on SEN um, and like take the point about allied health professionals, um, what should we be looking to replicate and what should we be avoiding? Um, I suppose, to be honest, there <laughs> there isn't a gold standard out there because immersion education in itself is relatively new in the grand scheme of things. So we need more research. Um, other jurisdictions, such as Wales, for example, have acknowledgements of this within their legislation. Um, their statutory guidance in Scotland, for example, that puts not a duty on, on the local authorities, but at least a, a prompt on them that they have to consider what provision is being made available. We obviously don't have the equivalent within our current legislation. So I suppose every jurisdiction is on the journey at the minute in terms of how do we promote inclusion and how do we effectively support but we are probably the furthest behind in that journey. So it's it's changing the mindset and starting to look at, you know, how does this look for special educational needs provision in the immersion context and starting to implement the things that need to be implemented. Um, one of the pushbacks that we get often is, you know, what's available in the South. And, and what we say is, well, bad practice is bad practice, regardless of where it happens. It's not that we should be looking to emulate something that's not worth emulating. So there is also scope on an all-island basis to work on the progression of assessment tools, for example, because you're, you're working with the essentially similar cohorts, um, and that can be more cost-effective as well. So I think just in, in short, um, we're, we are behind other jurisdictions, but we need to be looking at what's available and, and I suppose working towards that goal together because um, yeah, no, one, no one's really there at the minute. Mm. Um, um, if I may, just around, we, that's a very big concern for obviously for the teachers that we interviewed and I just want to share with you some, some comments from them. So one of the teachers when they were asked about SEN were very, very concerned about the gap that there is between um, the gap of support or the lack of support. So this, the the leader, the teacher said, we've got some statements through for pupils in year 11 and year 12 that probably should have had those statements some 10 years before. So just to give you an indication, another teacher in a completely different school has spoken about the level playing field. There is not a level playing field for those going through English medium instruction and those going through Irish medium instruction. In relation to your point about international best practice, certainly we can look across the water in different areas, but also part of our findings was about being able to pinpoint very carefully about the additional competencies that we would, we know that the teachers have, and all immersion teachers, wherever they're teaching across the world, have these competencies. Um, here within Northern Ireland, and, and I'll pass over to my colleague Mel just to mention a few of those. Yeah, that. sure, just to say that. Um, you know, we didn't look specifically at special educational needs in, in our review, but that it, the, the competencies are, are pretty much something you can find in immersion contexts everywhere. This is, a, this is a model that you find everywhere. This isn't some sort of unicorn unique just to hear. Um, so our study identified numerous additional competencies that immersion teachers have to embed in their daily practices. And they'd be sites for further development for teachers. Um, and these would include linguistic expertise. And so that, that's referring to the knowledge about the language, as well as knowledge of the language, like this, this sort of two different things. Uh, familiarity with this minoritized cultural knowledge. Expertise with plurilingual pedagogies. These students are all bilingual. Um, to Orla's point earlier, they're not just sort of two solitudes. They're, they're this functioning bilingual, so we need plurilingual pedagogies. Skill with materials development and technology. Um, teachers need to be competent in integrating diverse subject matter and cultural content into instruction. 
um, there are competencies around understanding of political <coughs> complexities that are relevant to the specific immersion contexts. Um, ability to liaise with parents and carers to advocate for minoritized language students. This is community approach um, and competencies around the reflexivity and awareness of power inequities that are inside and outside the classroom. Uh, these are things that, that all immersion teachers pretty much need to be able to do. And these aren't just like additional skill sets that are tacked on. These are embedded into the daily practice that they do. So it's almost like something that can't be disentangled. Um, it needs to be embedded all the way around. Mm -hmm. And if, if I may add, the impact of a person having those competencies and having developed it is, is to carry a burden. And just, I just would like to share what one teacher who, said, who spoke to us said, that she had 22 years teaching and she is still working to 10 o'clock every night, preparing resources and things that just aren't there. An English teacher can go online and have a wealth of resources at their fingertips. Ours is very limited. I see that within my age group, a big burnout of teachers, because it's easier to work when all kinds of resources are there. It's a well-being piece as well, oh, definitely absolutely. coming through very clearly. Thank you, Chair. Robbie, you get to finish, so make, make it a good one. I'm just going to take as long as he took. Pat's put brilliantly in Irish. I've never heard him speak as... As much and as well, but well done, Pat. It was, it was very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have a go at this. I'll have to practice it in front of a mirror or something. Um, you're very welcome. Um, I, I was thinking back to, to I was in a, an Irish medium school maybe 20 years ago with a firefighter's kit on, um, and it seems to me I was thinking back to what, what happened at that stage because the the primary five fire safety talk and the pack that was provided by the fire service was in Irish. It was given in Irish, which was good. Uh, we didn't have the facility or ability to deliver it verbally. Um, actually, I, I'm, I'm slightly inaccurate in that we did have someone in my watch with two Irish speakers, actually. Um, one sadly's passed on, and uh, if we had those guys on, they were able to deliver it verbally. But the, the benefit at the time, even if you couldn't, was the pack and the information was in Irish. Verbally, if we had to give it in English, it was probably okay. But I'm very mindful of the fact, and, it's, and my two colleagues, Danny and Kate, have spoken to us, it takes a village to raise a child. So my interest in education, primarily, forgive me, isn't so much the teachers and so on, it's about the impact on the kids. And we've heard from Gail Lynn that in Irish medium, the outcomes are very, very good in terms of employability and opportunities. So we think that the argument has been well, well, well made for that. But education changes in schools and teachers have many more responsibilities foisted on them. And one of those was, and it was a good thing, which was the um, prevalence and the need for uh, some more support for pupils in around mental health and well-being because when we talk to young people <clears throat> in terms of what their priorities are their number one priority almost always revolves around mental health and well-being so in regard when help happy healthy minds was a very specific question with happy healthy minds was ruled out were there any difficulties in regard to access and services i'm going to be slightly controversial here but because my wife's a public health nurse who deals with um uh, a lot of people whose first language isn't English and she has to avail of it an interpreter so, so I know this will be two stages so the controversy shouldn't be controversial what do we do now and in terms of that uh, facilitation of interpretation if it's required and I know what your gold standard will be your gold standard will be that people can come in and, and, and communicate um, so I think yes in, in terms of happy healthy minds yes there were challenges but I th Irish language and Irish immersion is the priority within Irish medium schools however if a health and well-being need presents then it regardless of the language that that is delivered the health and well-being need is the priority so if necessary students will access and will be um, referred to those services but you're right in saying that we should be working towards we have a big workforce planning piece here you know and we were very heartened that in the independent review of education that they mentioned specifically that that should include an Irish medium strand. So we should be looking at pathways that you can go down those allied health professional routes, but you, you, you can also maintain Irish language or that you can learn language, Irish language so that 10 years down the line, we have access to those staff who then can come in and support um, pupils through the medium of Irish. There's also the mindset piece that, you know, one easy solution is when resources are coming through, just make sure that they're available in Irish. Um, and at least, as you've mentioned, there there is that access to the resources. That's just, is, has there been any regression in regards, not specifically to pick the fire service out here, but in terms of those agencies who do come into schools, all schools, um, is that still the case? Do, uh, so other departments, rather than education, are they still respectful and mindful and, and yeah. go 
I think, yeah, yeah. As, as people become more aware that the sector exists, especially those charity organisations, there is more of a willingness and um, an awareness that, you know, resources are needed through the medium of Irish. So we have engaged with the likes of VNI Hospice, Concern, um, organisations who have taken the own, their own initiative to make sure that they can engage with Irish medium pupils through the medium of Irish. So that's very, very promising. Um, we also have access to the Translation Hub through the Department of Communities who are doing work, you know, um, free. free of charge to make sure that resources are made available. So, um, yeah, we're yes, going in the right direction. I'm not sure if what you said wanted to come in just on that community piece. I know we're typed, but it takes a village to raise a child. I don't know if you want yeah, to. Yeah, actually, <laughs> uh, okay. it, that idea resonated a lot with me when they talk about the, it takes a village to educate because some of the things that I've been doing for the past few years in my life in different parts of the world, like um, Bolivia, Ecuador, Peru, Mexico, the United States, Canada, now here, is more and more I am seeing pedagogical approaches and research that centers or, or, or moves away from the capitalistic mindset of learning a language. In other words, I have heard students and teachers say, but what's the point of teaching Irish? If, what, how are you going to use it? What's the point of this? Are you going to get a job with this? But then a lot of people think that at missing the point that learning a language or their language is not necessarily because I'm going to get a job and I'm going to get money, I'm going to get a car, I'm going to be rich. It's not that. It's about heritage. It's about history. It's about language. It's about learning from each other. And most of the work that has been done with these communities here in Irish medium instruction is about that. It's about revitalizing that language, the culture, the heritage, in connection with the communities that are coming in to the city and Northern Ireland, the immigrants, refugees, asylum seekers. So I guess it just just to wrap up my idea is like, yes, we need more funding. Yes, we need more, more, more funding for both uh, doing more research uh, as to how we can move forward into a direction that is counterintuitive to this capitalistic mindset and more moving towards this idea of the hunger to learn. Because we want the students to be hungry to learn as opposed to, oh, now I need to take this test. Oh my God, this test again. We don't want those minds. We want how proud I am of learning this language. And now I'm like some of the, the people we interview, they say, I was so happy to see my child singing this song in Irish when I was like, you know, like having dinner with them, I was like, this is the beauty of this. The beauty of this is not about you're going to get a job and then you get to use, you know, Irish in this particular shop in Ireland or whatever. It's not about that. It's about the beauty of the heritage, history, language, and culture. And that's what we as researchers and in collaboration with CNG is about how we can combine both um, research, but also with the help of you as policymakers, how can we move forward as society towards these goals? Fine, well, just to finish out, I, I, I was going to say, I don't think there's maybe a better point at which we could uh, well, conclude, I was, well, because <laughs> I think that that is, that is maybe summed up our well, discussion final, uh, pretty well. I think it's really, well, it's, I'll be really brief for this, okay, and it, it, it's off the back just of the way you are pushing hey, your luck it's here. Off the back, it's, <laughs> Daniel McCross used to do this all the time. It's off the back <laughs> of a debate yesterday, because I'm, I'm really interested in something you said, they're learning from each other, and I think there's a, there's a journey that we all need to take in this country, particularly people of a certain vintage, um, learning from each other. Do you guys engage in a shared education project? Is, is the schools involved in shared education? Because I think it's really important that children from all school backgrounds get the chance to meet and engage in, in, in the manner that they... And if we can we, do it, the answer in yeah, less than 30 seconds. We absolutely <laughs> do. I'm just, I'm just, I would be very mindful. I've been working in shared education through um, Corleone Gil Scalette as far back as 2011. What I will say is there are specific challenges in relation to shared education, again, including our needs. I think we cannot get to a place where shared education works across the education system until we get to a place where we can share bilingually. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure the system has included that in, in its plans. Um, and, and I think absolutely many schools are involved, but we have a journey to go on in terms of ensuring other schools are willing to share with Irish medium schools and also that Irish medium schools be included and able to express their identity as part of those sharing sessions and that can be only done through bilingual sharing which is a, it's another journey we need to go on but it's it's absolutely vital and those schools who are involved there are so many success stories so, yeah.
probably if you get in in the next session, you'll be very, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going after this one. <laughs> a sincere thanks to all of you for Thank your you presentation. I know we have run over time, but I think that was really worth covering in the detail we covered it. And I, I would suggest that there may well be actions arising from this, but perhaps after we've spoken to the departmental officials to, to just uh, agree on some actions arising uh, from that. But thank you for, for your time. Mike, I give like a and Jess. Thank you so much for the invitation and the opportunity. Come on, love. I get anything that'll give you a shout, okay? Yeah, um, we're just we're going to bring the departmental officials through now, and again, we, we are really, really pressed for time. So I would just. I appreciate everybody's help to get through the, the, the session usefully, but, but, but succinctly, if possible.